Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you my third attempt, which was ultimately successful in creating a brass goblet using the lost PLA technique. Uh, to do this, I had to um, create a, uh, you know, one heating, uh, one kiln, I guess, or burner uh, for heating up the brass. And uh, I bought marine I think it's called naval naval brass uh, or marine brass i think naval brass uh, because i needed something that was lead free uh, if you're going to drink from it and i had to have a second uh, kiln to uh, burn out the uh, pla obviously i have a 3d printer uh, to print the the, uh, the item and uh, you know pla filament uh, i had to design it uh, so there's a lot of steps involved. Uh, it starts off with uh, just using Fusion 360 to design the, the model. I put some letters on it as you can see and um, then uh, I use Mesh Mixer, then I use Cura uh, Slicer which creates the, the 3D printing file. I have a Ender 3 Pro printer. I was using PLA which is a, a plastic filament and um, then I, uh, you need a flask uh, and some plaster. A flask is just a metal container uh, that you'll see in the video. Uh, I also use this rubber thing on the top, which uh, basically creates a, uh, a cone or a funnel so that when you pour the, the brass in, it, it kind of goes in uh, together. Uh, it didn't come out perfect, and I'll uh, go over that at the end. Here is uh, attempt number one right here and attempt number two. So obviously both failures. I guess you could say I got more brass before it exploded, but obviously this is not really significantly better. The one thing I will say is I printed this at a better, um, higher resolution, so to speak, lower uh, layer height on the 3D printer. Um, and uh, I think the finish, I didn't polish this one, I had to polish this, but you can see these, these lines are much deeper, um, the print lines, and this one is actually a decent finish. If I polish this up, uh, it wouldn't take much work and it would look really nice. And the letters also came out better on take two. Uh, these takes are expensive though. I don't really want to rest till I get this right, but how much money can I waste on brass, you know? So I dragged it inside. I'm not really sure why it exploded this time. I mean, obviously it was uh, pressure. Okay, I think uh, this is the third try of doing this. Um, it's really getting to be annoying. <laughs> it's such a difficult thing to get right, but we're gonna go ahead and give it another try. So I'm gonna pull the power. So I'm not dealing with, uh, with that. This is the brass. It's fucking hot as hell. Hopefully I got enough of it in here. Put it right here. Lift it up with my uh, little dude here and pour. Certainly would be nice if that worked. Certainly would be nice. But I've uh, had a couple of failures and 
and uh, this is a really difficult thing to uh, master, unfortunately. So it's still pretty hot over here. Starting to solidify, you see a nice orange glow. I don't know if you get that on the video. It's pretty. We'll have to give that uh, probably five minutes. At least five minutes. All right. All right, so I got the bucket filled up with water. Uh, let's check temperature on this thing now. I'm reading 385 Celsius for the uh, brass and 200 Celsius for the plaster. I think we could go ahead and dunk it. Curious to see what the other side reads, actually. It's probably not bad. 179, so that's fine. That's not too much. And I like how the brass did not break out of the bottom. That's the first time that uh, I didn't have a break and a leak. So I think all the brass stayed in, uh, which is really cool. All right, let's go time. I didn't have the plaster um, you know, uh, mold as hot this time, uh, which is making this much less uh, of a steam kind of explosion situation like I've had before. I also added um, sand to the uh, to the plaster, so I think it's a little bit more durable. Uh, but the problem is, uh, I'm gonna have to break it out because it's not. Um... Hi. Yeah, it's gone better than it has before. Oh, I guess I'll just leave it in there until it cools off, and then I'll break it out. I'm pretty excited, I have to say. This is as good as it's ever looked. I'm gonna show you. I don't really need these gloves anymore. Coming at it, casting. It looks like a cup. Can't argue with that, huh? Look at that. That is a legitimate looking cup. I am pretty freaking impressed. Well, we'll clean that up and, wow, I'll give you a picture at the end. So here is the end result of uh, my third or fourth attempt at putting to, uh, creating this brass goblet uh, using the lost PLA technique. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done uh, brass. I've done some things out of aluminum, but never uh, lost PLA. I've been doing aluminum. Uh, casting using um, Petrobon sand uh, and maybe making uh, clay models and things like that. So this is pretty sophisticated for me. Um, the shame is that even with all my work uh, and it looks pretty good, it's still not perfect. This is not commercial quality uh, at all. Um, and you can buy a, uh, a brass goblet for 30 or $40 online. So uh, certainly not cost effective. Um, considering all I had to, to uh, purchase. I just want to show you up close and you can see some of the imperfections. Uh, I did not use the, the vacuum uh, during the pour and uh, there is some porosity here obviously so it didn't you know didn't come out perfectly. Uh, the bottom came out really bad and that's because I, I didn't use a riser uh, so I had to sand that down pretty heavily just to get it to uh, to get out all the uh, the imperfections, but you you know I think you know it looks pretty good from a few feet away, and I'm I'm happy with it. I will use this. I still have to probably clean out the inside a little bit better. Um, I used a, a polishing uh, wheel uh, after using you know multiple uh, types of sandpaper, uh, you know, and I even bought a uh, a Harbor Freight uh, two inch sanding machine just to uh, to get the contour because I, uh, it was too hard to do by hand. 
Um, as far as the layer lines, there actually are still some layer lines. I don't know if it shows up in the video. Um, so, you know, this, this could be uh, polished a, a little bit better. But, you know, overall, I, I feel pretty good about it. Uh, it has a certain weight to it that you would never uh, have uh, with a commercial. Uh, you know, if you buy something in the store, it's usually much, much thinner. Uh, this, uh, I don't know how many ounces it is, but it doesn't feel like a, like a typical tin that you pick up. Um, actually, you can see here, I put some solder in to, uh, th th this didn't come out good. Like I said, it really needed a riser and you know, this was really up right underneath where I was pouring. Uh, so if, if I would have had a three inch riser, um, then that would have increased the, uh, the pressure. Uh, and I think uh, these are probably air bubbles. I think those wouldn't have formed. So, uh, but uh, this is it, final product. Um, like I said, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it took a while. Um, I'm still brainstorming what my next project is gonna be. Um, maybe I'll make a ring or uh, some other device. Brass wasn't easy to work with. Uh, the temperature is pretty high. Aluminum is much easier, but you know, aluminum is not as hard and not as durable. And I don't think you wanna drink from an aluminum cup. It wouldn't polish as nicely. Brass really does polish nicely.